Okay, so the observer. So if, the, if anyone is experiencing anything, like any physical sensation, uh, okay, well, there's two things one can observe. Mm. Oh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the usual thing. Understand that if I hold up my hand, my hand is an object. Yeah? Now, anyone who's observing my hand is not my hand. They will have the experience that they are, they are observing the hand there is detached observing of the hand. There is no confusion of anyone in this room that they are my hand. Mm -hmm. And if, if I move my hand from here to here, it's a passing object, but still nobody's confused that they are my hand. Mm -hmm. and even if I hide my hand and there's no hand there, nobody's still thinking they're my hand. Yeah, or is confused. So, now the next thing is thoughts. That which observes thoughts, yeah, so thoughts can sometimes be passing by, uh, sometimes there can be no thoughts, there can be just the timeless now, mm. or sometimes there can be a thought, or can, there can be many thoughts, you know, going past, you know, there's a thought about this, a thought about that. Thoughts are objects that pass by. That which observes thoughts, is it a thought? Is that which is observing thoughts past? Is it a thought? No. No. So, so that's the way to release thoughts. Now, the only time thoughts can be a problem is if there's identification or interest or hooking into thoughts. Mm -hmm. Then it can seem like I am my thoughts. But actually, if you observe that which is observing all thoughts past and is not interested in hooking into them, is not a thought. It's clear of all thoughts. So who you are is not a thought. Thoughts are not what you like. No one's confused they're my hand. That's the mm. same thing as you're not your thoughts. So don't be confused. Next thing is um, feelings. Let's say there's someone who's experiencing tiredness or lethargy or um, like if, if, um, if a fog came into this, into this room would you be the fog? No. There would be observing of the fog. No. Even if there was a big fog in here, you're still not the fog. You are the observer of the fog. That's all that tiredness is. There's, cl there's clarity and presence, and then there seems to be like a fog. But actually, there is that which observes tiredness. No. The, observer of, the observer of tiredness, that which observes tiredness come and go. Is it tired? No. So, no. So what about, um, what about if suddenly um, one is feeling healthy and well and then suddenly there is a sensation in the tummy? Suddenly there's a sensation in the tummy. Is, is that which observes the, the sensation in the tummy come? Is the observer affected by the sensation with the tummy? No. Mm -hmm. does, uh, does an observer experience a funny tummy? No. The observer doesn't experience it. Just like you, even I put my hand in front of your face, you're still not my hand. Okay? So if there is any kind of pain in the body that suddenly arises, is that which is observing pain in pain? No. No. Now, here's another one. The body. If there's an experience of the body, like, when I experience, if I was to try and experience my body, there'd be a shape, yeah? Mm -hmm. There's the limits of the body. Is that which is observing the body, or observing the limits of the body, the body? Mm -hmm. No. So, if you're in the, now, if you're in the observer uh, of that, if the observer is still got, it, it, if the observer is experiencing that problem, shall we say, the thoughts or the, the funny tummy or whatever it is, then go to the observer of that observer. Yeah, go to the observer. If the observer seems to have some kind of relationship with uh, with a thought, uh, with a tummy, with a pain, with the body, then that observer is interested in mm -hmm. whatever's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. So okay, so then go to the observer of that observer. Is the observer of the observer which has interest in the world? See if that observer has any interest in the world. When, 
when some when when there is uh, pure observing, uh, everything loses its power to have any kind of relationship with that observer. Mm. You know, no no the observer is not in pain. The observer is not a body. The observer can never suffer. Um, the observer does not experience time. The, exer the observer does not suffer thoughts. Also, as you go to the various levels of the observer, things start to disappear. When there's no interest or identification with something, it ceases to exist. It doesn't exist. So if you, uh, if you keep, you know, the observer of sound, does the observer of sound experience sound? It does? Yeah. Oh. The observer of noise. So go to that which observes noise. Mm -hmm. The observer which has no interest in noise. Does that... And if that observer which has no interest in noise is experiencing noise, then go to the observer of that observer where there is no interest in noise and mm -hmm. see if there is noise there. You have to do it as an, as an experience, as an, an experiential thing. The observer which has no interest in time, does time exist for that observer? No. No. So, again, go to that which observes noise. And if that observer is picking up noise, then go to the observer of that observer. Go to the observer which has no interest in noise. You know? Go to the observer which has no interest in this world. You don't. You don't have to take it that mm. far. But if if you're if you if the if the if there is holding on to something, go to the observer. Whatever is being held on. And if that observer is is also seems to be having a relationship with what's being suffered in the world, then go to the observer of that observer and see if there is an observer which can suffer anything that's happening in this world. But you do that, see? So, just like... So that's how you do the observer. Like, one thi if another thing to know is, if a thing can come and go, can that which has seen it come and go be the thing that has come and gone? Mm -hmm. No. So, don't mean really, like, if, if a pain comes, <clears throat> there was something here before the pain came, and that is also here, and will also be here when the pain is gone. Mm -hmm. If there is, uh, if there is uh, the observer that's here, and then there can be a funny tummy, and there can be observing of a funny tummy, and the funny tummy can go, but that observer is still here and is not affected by that funny tummy. Mm -hmm. the, observer of, uh, the observer of thoughts is here before a thought, is here during a thought, and will be here when that thought is gone. But actually there is an observer there is such a thing as an observer where thoughts don't exist mm. because it's not looking into any thought, it's not even interested in thoughts. When you're in the observer which has zero interest in any thoughts, then that's, you go into the thoughtless now, thoughtless presence. Because things dis to experience something there has to be some kind of interest or hooking or identification, otherwise these things totally disappear. There is no time occurring here right now, there is no body here right now. That's true. There is no suffering here now. So these can only be these can only be experienced if something is latching onto that. And if there's no latching, there is no that. It doesn't exist, you see. So that's the way you release you you release. Even if a thing is coming and going, it seems to be gone and then it seems to come back. There is that which observes coming and going. And there is that which observes and, and if the observer of that which comes and goes still notices that which comes and goes, go to the observer of that observer, you see. So as you, as you, go, to the, as you go to purer observers, I'm sort of using this language, but this is an experiential, this is not about thinking. As you go that less and less is identified in this world, less and less is hooked in, less and less is projected as being meaningful and needing to be picked up by anything. 